Hey guys, salut mes amis, ok, hallo gebar, Maxime here. This video will be my last for this year, and as the title suggests, I'm going to give you guys a quick little rewind or rundown of the biggest and most interesting updates that came out this year. So let's begin. In January, we had a big update regarding Prime. Accounts would be automatically upgraded to Prime after reaching rank 21 without requiring a phone number connected to your account. This was received quite poorly from the community. We also got our first version of the new Vertigo playable on Wingman for B site. Speaking of other maps, Zoo had a return and we also got Abby into competitive matchmaking, which I really liked. In February, Valve fixed a few smoke bugs, a lot of danger zone features were added, and we also experienced the Katowice 2019 Major with Spoiler alert, Astralis being the champions. In March, we got our first launch option to help reduce CPU memory use. This was a response to the game's very slow alt tabbing, which is now on by default and works really well. We also got an important update for streamers, YouTubers, allowing us to hide avatars and even the names of players, because it could potentially ban us if a sudden watermelon picture was seen on stream. Finally, a very big economy change was introduced, which is the system we use today. The M4 silencer was also buffed by increasing its magazine from 20 to 25, and we got our first collection of new items from the Prisma case, named after my cat. Oh, and the Easy For Ends music kit was released as well. In April, a new Danger Zone map was introduced known as Sirocco, alongside the new items such as the Exojump boots, which actually made the Danger Zone a lot more fun. A lot of updates were released to Vertigo, buying unlimited flashes during buy time was fixed by setting a limit to only allow buying maximum 2. Valve also gave us a radial quick inventory menu, and Workout was reintroduced to matchmaking. In May, more Danger Zone stuff that no one cares about was released, except for the nostalgic shield. We also got the looking to play feature, and this is a big one, smokes, molotovs, and HE explosives were finally server sighted, so looking the same for everyone. Lastly, Ruby was introduced to matchmaking, another fun map to play retakes on, but one that I never ended up playing competitively, and Zoo was removed. In June, Counter-Strike turned 20 years old, and with that, we got to play a retro version of Dust 2, which is essentially a similar version of Dust 2 from 1.6. Apart from a chicken capsule, they didn't add much more than that, even though the franchise is now older than some of the pros in the scene. But they still promised some things for the future, and I'll be going to that soon. In July, Valve disabled purchasing snowballs through console commands. Yeah. Snowballs. From like, the beginning of the year. And we also got ranks for Danger Zone. This was my main concern with the game mode. Too bad it was implemented so late. Speaking of late features and one that should have been released much earlier to the game, Scrimmage, which is basically unranked matchmaking. In August, we had our second major in Berlin. Spoiler alert, Astralis won that one too. In September, we had an interesting update to bots, basically making them smarter and behave more like humans. This certainly feels like something that we will see more of in 2020, because nothing has changed yet in the competitive spectrum. But I would like to focus more on this in a predictions video, if you guys want to see that of course. Valve also gave us a few new commands to practice nades with, such as giving us a live preview and rethrowing last nade. Also, French users were given the possibility to use the x-ray scanner, which is basically a loophole for opening cases in certain places where certain laws might not allow it. In October, we finally got a themed weapon case, sticker capsule, and the new cache for the 20th anniversary of Counter-Strike. Let's not forget, we also got the classic knife added back to the game, which I'm probably gonna get next year. Another big update for this month was the restrictions added on newly purchased keys. Keys today are not allowed to leave the account that they are bought on to prevent them from being used as a black market currency. In November, a very much needed debuff or price increase was made to the SG553, now being at $3,000. The FAMAS plus Galil were also lowered in price by 200 and slightly buffed. Let's not forget that this month also introduced a very welcoming and surprising DLC, CSGO's 9th Operation Shattered Web, which also welcomed the very controversial 
agents. Storage units were also presented to the game to stash your unused items, and a Halo music kit together with a sticker capsule as well, which was the first time we've seen CSGO promote another game this way. Finally, in December, winter-themed stuff such as snowballs are back, the new service medals are here, some visual improvements to the agents were made, and you can finally draw on the map. I might have missed something, but I'm pretty sure that I at least got the most interesting stuff from this year. But Maximo, the game went free to play! Yeah, that was last year. For everyone who's followed me so far, thank you so much. Please let me know how long you've been here by posting it down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more CSGO content, and I'll see you guys next year. Stay awesome and go bananas!